Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben. Today we're going to take a look at Woodfall, which is a dark fantasy mini setting recently kickstarted by Shane Walsh, also known as Lazy Lich, uh, and is now available uh, for print on demand or in PDF form on Drive-Thru RPG. As usual, there will be a link down in the description below for where you can check it out for yourself. However, before we begin, um, I'd like to do a shout out to Marcus Flores and Michael Lombardi, who recently became patrons of Questing Beast. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting the channel. And these two guys, along with everyone else pledging at a $2 level or higher, receives a monthly adventure, a one-page adventure. It could be a dungeon. It could be an adventure location of some other sort uh, for them to play with. Put one out every month. And the most recent one is The Gullet. And in fact, I'm going to put a link down in the description below for where anyone can get a copy of this. So this will be a free sample if you want to check out the kinds of adventures that I'm giving away to patrons. All right, let's get into our review here. So Woodfall, it's print on demand as I, as I mentioned before. And before we begin, the construction has a issue that I've noticed before with drive through RPG books, especially smaller hardback ones. I noticed this issue back when I looked at the weird that befell Drig Bolton. And that is that it's very stiff. The spine doesn't really want to open very well. Now, over time with this book, it's loosened up a little bit, but not only does the book not really want to lay flat, it kind of flips up, but the there's a little there's tension here when you try and pry open the spine. I noticed something similar here with Woodfall. It's just very tight and doesn't want to open very much. You gotta you gotta really kind of hold it open. So that is a downside, but it's not really the fault of the author. That's just a drive-through RPG thing. Um, it might work better in soft cover. I'm not really sure. The hard cover is, of course, sturdier, but that is one consideration. So Woodfall is a swamp. Well, more specifically, it's a town in a swamp inhabited by witches and other outcasts from the main city. Which main city? It doesn't say because this is meant to be dropped into your own campaign setting. We have a little diagram of how that's supposed to work here. Uh, we have a great little hex map. We have random encounters for each of the different types of areas. One thing that I would have liked uh, to see is maybe have the actual names of the different clans here instead of just the symbols. Especially on my first read through, these symbols are used fairly frequently and it became a little bit confusing that the name was often not put next to the symbol, which made it a little bit hard for me to track. However, it is nice that there is a bunch of different locations. They all have different motivations. They're all vying for different things. So there's plenty of adventure and faction game to be had there. We have Woodfall Town. So you are now uh, leaving the kingdom and entering self-governed witch territory. So this little town is like a anarchist commune. It's made of lots of little islands that are all together and each person on their island is autonomous more or less, but has some sort of obligation towards the whole. Got lots of hooks, getting players to come to Woodfall. And we have a map of how the whole place works out. I really like the art style. Um, it's very scratchy, it's very idiosyncratic. There's like an amateurish quality to it, but to a extent that I think works. Um, I think it evokes the feel that the author is going for, even if it's not as polished as you might see in some other books. We have a brief history of Woodfall. So it used to be ruled by a wizard, then the wizard died, and then some witches took up residence in the old tower and expanded it into a city. The um, city, the main city with the king came and threw all the witches out, but they all returned again. And now the king is getting more and more upset by this and is planning another eviction. However, it's becoming harder and harder to do this due to the goodwill that this whole witch's town has engendered in the local community. One really nice little diagram here that I wish I would see more of in these types of books is the economy. So you can see you have the local towns and farms, you have Woodfall, and you have the city, and you can see how they're related to each other. What is producing what, what place relies on what other thing, and so on. And you can see it all in one place rather than having a lot of text. That's really great. Anytime you have visual representation of these sorts of things, it is a positive in my book. Have the basic legal system. As I mentioned, it's more of like an anarchist commune, so things are fairly um, minimalist in terms of what the laws actually are. 
And we have a lo lots of different locations within this town. And then eventually we'll get to locations outside the town in the rest of the swamp. One thing that I did notice as I was reading this was that if you look down here, it looks like the town, which is right here, it's right on the edge of a lake, right? So it's like half on land, half out in the lake of this swamp. But when I got to the actual map of the city, it's a little bit confusing because it looks like it's almost surrounded by land, right? The land covers it on almost all sides here, um, which made it a little bit harder to picture exactly how this fits together within the rest of the swamp. Might be a small quibble, but I just found that a little bit odd. Anyway, so one of the great things I love about this is that in all of these different shops, and there's a couple of them, uh, and there's a couple systems for making your own potions and items, there's lots of little illustrations. So it's not just a random table of cool masks you can get. Each mask has its own illustration. So you know more concretely what it's going to look like. That's really great. It's like a great little menu. We have the Crooked Inn. Regulars of the Crooked Inn. Of course, you can get gossip and rumors there. Fences, forgers. This is a great place if you have uh, murder hobos who just like sneaking around and ignoring the law, right? You have a lot of things that you can do here to make or to uh, use with your stolen goods, right? You can have a place to actually sell stuff. Forging is really excellent. It's great that there's resources for that because you can use it to um, influence, you know, politics, movers and shakers elsewhere in your setting. We have the Ravenry, which we can use to send messages across your entire setting, along with a bunch of example messages. There is a strong emphasis placed on usefulness throughout this whole book, which is really great. Something that we see commonly in the OSR. And it's wonderful that these smaller, um, you know, one man produced books are paying attention to that, even when some of the really big players are not. Necromancy and Woodfall. So this is a big... Um, influencer in terms of how the town works. So there are ne necromancers in Woodfall. Necromancy is legal. However, um, the use of skeletons has to be voluntary, right? When you die, you have to sign a contract saying you're allowed to use my skeleton. But they use the skeletons to do a lot of the manual labor. And so there's a lot of skeletons just wandering around. You're not supposed to destroy them. They're there to actually help the commune. One thing I should point out is that I really like how this little town has a strong political aspect right? It doesn't really take any stand on whether the way that the politics or the political structure of this commune works is good or bad. It's just there, and it's an, another element that players can manipulate. I love it when any sort of adventure location has a strong overarching theme, right? Whether it's, you know, anarchism or communism or whether it's like feudalism or whatever, as long as there's a strong structure in place that players can get their minds around, then they're going to be able to manipulate it. Instead of it just being this vague, I don't really know how things work around here, that is true with a lot of fantasy towns. Things are harder to manipulate when there aren't rules. So rules are good. We have a thieves guild, potion shop. As I mentioned before, look, you got little pictures for each potion. That's really cool. Players like drawing, you know, little potions on their character sheets, so I like that. We got some hirelings with illustrations, and we have a spy. We have an interloper who is here in the town and is here to mess things up. He's here to disrupt the town, but everyone trusts him. No one suspects that he's a spy. So that's a great little element of chaos that you can inject into scenes here. We have the fairies of Woodfall. So the fairies are hunted and imprisoned throughout the kingdom. So this is one of the few places where they are safe. We have NPCs and we have these great tables where you can really quickly um, either just read straight across or you can probably randomize them, right? You could easily randomize their name and use different aspects of these. We have a relationship map, very similar to the one that we've seen in Vornheim, where you can simply take NPC names, plop them in, and you have a complex web of relationships. The swamp and the dark wood. So moving out of the town into the rest of the swamp. We have this wonderful table here of how all of the factions relate to one another. This is a great idea, um, brought down mostly by the fact that the names of the factions are not put next to these symbols. Because as someone just reading this for the first time, I had to constantly flip back from this page to the early page that actually had the names of each of them. 
So that is suboptimal. I, I probably would have write little names in here if I was going to run this myself, just so that it was easier to reference. We have a mutant clan. And if you get too near them, you can get mutated by the weird poisons and uh, curses in the air. We have a hermit druid who can help you out in one, more than one way. A goblin punk fortress, which is um, apocalyptic in the sense that it's trying to bring about the end of the world in one way or another. And there's a timeline um, for that. And other factions have their opinions about what these goblins are trying to do. We have a lonely troll. And if you go back into this troll's home and go down this passage, you can find all sorts of crazy stuff. Basically, it's a good entrance for a dungeon. If you have other dungeons, you could probably plop it right here and attach it on and delve into it from this point. We have some frogmen who are basically aliens and are here and kidnapping people and turning them into more frogmen. We have the Revolutionary Corpse Council, which is a group of necromancers who were too necromancy for Woodfall and broke away and started their own little commune. And uh, these guys are extremely on the nose communists. Like their names are like Rotsky. And then you have Steel Gremlin, who's clearly Stalin. You have like this guy who's clearly Lenin. And then this guy's Mao, I suppose. It's a way too on the nose for me. Uh, it really just kind of yanks me out of the fantasy, especially since their faces are even drawn like those historical characters. Um, I just can't take it very seriously. So that's um, a negative for me, though other people, your opinion may vary on it. We have this really great little system similar to what I've seen in um, Fever Swamp, where you can easily track the different types of acolytes and skeletons that are underneath each of these figures by just crossing off these circles. That's a great little tool. We have their dungeon. We have some bog witches. The cult of the stag, which is like a um, terrorist environmentalist group that wants to spread the forest across everywhere. We have a soldier camp who don't like woodfall. We have a monster camp, each of which has a different personality and uh, different things that you can manipulate to try and get them on your side. We have swamp people living deep underwater if you want some underwater adventures. We have a wide variety of encounters, including lots of new monsters. The lamp-eyed witch, nice and creepy. The strange swamp creature, which is like this weird um, squid-like creature living in a stump. And it just sort of scurries around stealing random objects that it can find. So if your PCs leave objects lying about, there's a chance that this guy's just going to pick them up. We have a tombstone golem. That's excellent. Swamp Dryads, Swamp Hydra, it's sort of like a beholder, but it's a Hydra and it lives underwater. Lots of great monsters, most of which are very original and all of which have at least one weird thing about them. So if you're going to encounter them, you're not going to immediately know how to deal with them. And if you throw a couple of them in together, you're going to have an interesting encounter where you're going to have to use several different types of tactics all at once in order to succeed. We have an owl wolf instead of an owl bear. Some mutant frogs, soul flowers. We have monster hunting. So this reminds me a little bit of Hot Springs Island, where the uh, a good reason to hunt monsters is that they have useful materials that you can loot from them. They don't drop treasure, but you can use you know their skins or their hearts or their venom, and you can use those to help make potions. That's really cool. If you want to have a, a Witcher vibe, we got a range of weird treasure. Always great, along with some special unique treasures that get their own little pictures. A system for doing do-it-yourself magic, including some basic rules for crafting magic items, along with lots of different potion ingredients that you might have to collect to, gr to uh, brew your own potions. Some magical woods for uh, wand crafting. This is great that actual plants are listed in here instead of just monsters. Again, that feels like the legacy of Hot Springs Island, but I'd love to see more books do this. Orb materials that you can loot from different creatures. Here we got some more flora. Looks a lot like the Hot Springs Island pages, actually. Changes over time, so things that can happen to this location if you don't interfere, right? All of these different factions have different goals and they're going to pursue them. We have Woodfall village event ideas, so basic uh, premises for an adventure. 
and we got a um, character sheet at the back. And that's about it. We have some acknowledgments and appendix ends in the back. And yeah, so we have Vorenheim. There's definitely some Vorenheim influence in here. So uh, what I really like about this, it's very self-contained. It's an all-in-one book for Woodfall for this setting. Um, it's quite system neutral in the sense that there isn't a lot of stats, really any stats. Um, though, of course, if you're running this OSR style, throwing stats on a monster is dead simple. So it's not really a big deal. Um, but if you want to inject a dark fantasy mini setting into your campaign, this does exactly what it says it's going to do. It is designed for usability. A lot of great attention is paid to layout and there's a lot of creative ideas. There's a high density of useful information over just fluff, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So this is a great little module that would fit in almost anyone's campaign and would inject a lot of faction play, a lot of player driven stories, monster hunting, all sorts of, of stuff that you could do. You could play this for many, many sessions and not run out of material. So I strongly recommend Woodfall. I was very impressed by this. And I'll put a link down in the description below where you can check that out for yourself. And join me next time when I will be taking a look at What Ho Frog Demons, which is the next book in the, uh, the Hill Cantons series. Previous ones being Fever Dreaming Marlinko, Slumbering Ursine Dunes, and Misty Isles of the Elves, all of which I have reviewed previously on this channel. So this fills in a lot more details about the overall setting rather than being just one specific location. So I'm really excited to dig into this. This has been a long time coming. That's it for this time, everybody. See you next time, and thanks for watching.